being said, I was hoping it was not going to be longer than my uh, presentation. Uh, I just, uh, for those of you who don't know, I just graduated with a Master of Studies from the University of Cambridge last May, and this is the result of my dissertation. Uh, the dissertation uh, on sustainability leadership, I, if you want a copy, I can always give it to you. You will get a copy of the handouts of all the slides today, which will be emailed to you later. So, while I, because there are quite a lot of slides, if it whizzes past and you want to look at it again, don't worry, because you're going to get emailed it later. What I will be talking about today essentially is three things. One, why uh, should we care about sustainability? What is it and why should we care about it? Second, what did my study actually cover? And third, the biggest part, most importantly, how can you make use, potentially, of the results? First of all, let me go to sustainability as a concept. We like to, when we think of sustainability, naturally we think of the color green because so much of the idea is associated with climate change. Uh, that's actually an important part of the concept of sustainability, the fact that we have to eventually require ourselves to think in terms of using essentially finite resources of our planet. But that's not the, actually, for the Philippines in my view, that's not the most important part. The Climate Change Commission is correct when it highlights that we are the third uh, we are the country that is the third most affected by climate change and we do have to prepare for it. But in terms of sustainability, if there's one major reason why we should, uh, as businesses, be involved, it's because it's not just about climate change, it's also about social inequity. In a world where resources are finite, where we are more and more interdependent, and if we fail to recognize that interdependence, we will end up creating more problems, like for example, uh, climate change. Uh, in that kind of world, the only sustainable way to go is to recognize that unless we resolve our issues of social inequity, we will use up those resources. Because those who don't have will always go for those resources that they can get. And in a sense, therefore, for a, from a public policy perspective, uh, sustainability jives well with the greatest public policy challenge we have today in the Philippines. And that is, how do we make our society more equitable? How do we provide more opportunities to those who don't have? Uh, and in a sense, uh, the, what you see here uh, is the interdependence of those two cycles. On one hand, you have the fact that we have finite resources, uh, that's uh, the inherent nature of development. And the second, the fact that poverty uh, drives so much of, uh, drives, drives uh, uh, sus uh, sustainability so much. Uh, in the sense that uh, we are not a major cause as a developing economy. We're not actually a major uh, we're not a major factor in the climate change today. We do have to adapt to it, but we're not, a, we're not one of those that are creating the emissions that create climate change. We do, however, are, as one of the most inequitable economies, have to address the other aspect, which is poverty. There are many ways of simplifying this concept. And there, uh, what you have in this slide are four uh, pat uh, proposed patterns for uh, thinking about it. Beginning with the, on your uh, leftmost side, the development pillars. Uh, from there, if you go to the middle, we have uh, what Rex Drillon's favorite way of looking at sustainability, which is the three Ps, uh, planet, people, and profit. If you manage to think about them together, the center is acting sustainably. At the bottom of that uh, is a further development of the approach where you recognize that at the end of the day, everything that we do uh, will be bounded by our uh, planet's resources. 
Another way of looking at it is to see uh, sustainability in terms of five capitals. Uh, not just financial and manufacturing, but also social and natural and human capital. Which I think, as you see from the development of these models, highlights how we should, from a broad perspective, really think about the concept. We use our economies geared so much towards emphasizing short-term financial capital results. That's where you get your bonus. But it's only lately, in the past decade, that we finally come to realize that when you talk of capital or the resources to create value, it's really not just the financial metrics. It's also how you impact the environment. It's also, as Michael Portner would like to highlight, the shared value that businesses create with the communities that they engage in. So that in a big picture is sustainability. That is why we should care. The more important question for those of us in this room this morning is, why should businesses care? Why should corporate directors care? And there you have to look at the business case for sustainability, which is, why should we really look long term in addition to the results that our shareholders want from us? Now, normally the financial results. And there are various ways of looking at it. There are two models in this slide that I'm showing to you. One is uh, by uh, one scholar, Weybridge, which highlights the different, in different contexts, um, the different rationales for adopting a sustainability approach in one's strategic context. Uh, at any one time, one of those 11 will affect your business. Another way is to look at it from a game theory perspective. A fellow lawyer, Blackburn, highlighted in 2007 that if you adopt a game theory perspective, the, really, the only game long, uh, from a long-term perspective, the only game that should matter to your business is how you can keep going. And that is sustainability. I would like to, I tend to view it more uh, from a more practical perspective. And that perspective can be summed up in the word risk. Uh, risk, if you've been trained at it, actually has both negative and positive aspects. Because when you talk about risk management, it's not just about what can negatively affect you. If you're trained in risk management, you should also look at what can positively affect you because risk is all about uncertainty. Sustainability is also about dealing with uncertainty within the finite resources of our planet. And you can adopt the language of risk towards uh, in, in addressing sustainability. Uh, Accenture, they always conduct every two years a, uh, um, a survey of CEOs of firms who have signed up for the United Nations Global Compact for Change. Okay, so these are uh, large publicly listed companies in various developed economies who have signed up for the UN's primary compact for private business. And in 2013, these are the latest results with regards to how CEOs view sustainability as risk. From the negative side, they see sustainability as one, if not the biggest, driver for change with regards to their business models. And therefore, in, for 62% of them, 6 out of 10% of, uh, 6 out of 10 of all CEOs, to them, they have no recourse but to address it in their strategic planning. But here's the thing, for more of them, 8 out of 10 of them, or 7 out of 10 of them, they tend to view sustainability not negatively, in terms of, you know, we have to address climate change and that, and so forth. But positively, they see sustainability more as a lever for competitive advantage. If you build scenarios that look at the fact that we do have to be more positive in how we address together uh, the problems of interdependency in our world, that can create opportunities. And that is why 
uh, scholars, uh, seeing that there is more a trend toward businesses seeing sustainability not as a negative risk but more as a way to build shared value through opportunities and a source of competitive advantage have over the years gradually highlighted models for doing this. Uh, there are three uh, provided by another scholar, the first of which is taking the reactive approach. If you are in an inherently extractive industry like mining, it's very difficult to say that uh, you are sustainable. Yet, that is no excuse for you not to be, uh, to address sustainability issues. And the reactive approach hi highlights the fact that uh, whether you like it or not, uh, you impact your communities that you do business in. Anglo-American is one of the biggest mining companies. They're, one of the, they're actually the biggest in South Africa. They are, they have always been criticized for simple reason that they are in an extractive industry. Yet, they are also one of the leaders, uh, one of the leaders when it comes to pushing uh, sustainable interaction, sustainable partnerships with the communities that they uh, that they do uh, business with, particularly where they mine. Uh, and it has become a model where they frankly highlight that yes, we're in an extractive industry, but that does not mean that there are other ways that we can contribute or there are ways which we can try to remedy uh, the you, our current use of extractive resources because that is a reality that we're dealing with. You can, uh, you can be in a company that normally would not be associated with sustainability. Another approach of addressing it is by uh, taking a very deliberate approach, like BMW. By deliberate approach, here you highlight sustainability as a component part of your strategic planning, where it becomes a, a specific a set of metrics within your set of 